Gloria Contrup, and I'm the executive director of the Hoffman Smokin Center for Typography, as well as the director of Archetype Press. We view the press as, yes, it's a living archive of the archetypes of digital fonts, but it also is an archive of historically how letter forms and type developed. The work that the students do here is integrated into the typography curriculum of Art Center. What we do here is we use it as an experimental typography workshop. Yes, you can learn about the rudiments of typographic design, but you can also use the technology to experiment. To look at how does touching and making differ from working on a computer. What kind of design and creative landscape can you create within both technologies? And that's what we encourage the students to do here. Because we have the ability at the Typography Center to bring in visiting lecturers and artists, I thought this is our first opportunity to bring in a letterpress designer, someone who uses letterpress technology as well as digital technology to create and design. And that's why I invited Dafi Kuna here to Archetype Press because he really embodies someone who doesn't separate the technologies. He understands digital and he understands analog. And he's also from a generation that I think really wants to maintain an analog presence in how their creativity is developed. And I think Daffy really embodies this, the presence of analog and digital as one being. My name is Daffy Kuhne. I'm a designer and letterpress printer from Switzerland. I'm here uh, for the week. I'm the designer in residence here at the Hoffmann Milken uh, Center for Typography. So Archetype Press is a great archive. It has a lot of type, tons of presses, everything you would wish for. And you could really see that it is not dead here. The students come in every day. I saw so many students working on projects with physical type. Here, typography is really driven with this workshop. So it's so nice, so nice to see this all working. So for me, letterpress printing is more about the reproduction of a graphic concept. So I have a concept in mind and I produce it with letterpress technique, which doesn't mean that the final product has to look like less letterpress necessarily, but we can, through the process of manual typesetting or even hand carving a block, we design in a different way than we would on a computer where we can do anything we want with a bazillion numbers of fonts. Here we have a res restricted number of typefaces and this is boosting the quality of the process. The restrictions are a booster for creativity. So if I can do anything I want, I need to know what I want to do. But if I have a message that I want to put on paper and I have certain uh, selection of typefaces that I can use in a workshop, I will design and approach the project very differently. And these restrictions are helping me in my process and then I will go as big and crazy as I can within these restrictions. A lot of people, if they think about contemporary letterpress, they see something that has a lot of distress on the surface and just has that certain look. Personally, in my work, I'm not so interested in that because it's not like a style that I want to apply to a project. It's more that I would like to use the styles, different styles that I can use in my project and letterpress can do so much more than just 
weird compositions and distress on the surface. We can do so much more and the quality is outstanding if we use it the right way. And that's what I'm looking for. So what I'm gonna show you now uh, first is uh, two different techniques that I developed over the last years. And then you can later see how I use these in my practice. Technique number one, and you will see a poster where I use this later, is I use Elmer's glue and I draw a circle. So what you see here, this will, once it's dry, it will give me a profile and it also cha changes the surface consistency. So the glue seals the surface of that MDF board, means the ink doesn't get soaked up by the rough surface, it will be on the glue once it's dry and will be transferred to the, to the paper very easily. So, I prepared this because it takes a while to dry it. Wow. I print another one with a little more impression. a little less impression. Just the plain sheet, one sheet of impression and another one and you can see how it gets darker. In my studio in Switzerland I produce posters and in my process I involve printing presses but also the computer, but when it comes to production, there's always at least one printing process involved. So it's always a physical print in some way. So in the design process, I have to have or develop a deep understanding of the technique that I want to be working with. So I always start with an experiment. I start with setting up a tiny bit of a uh, form that I use, uh, uh, whatever uh, technique, I use maybe chipboard that I cut with scissors and I want to see what it looks like if I cut that chipboard with scissors and then I print that. So I need to have a very deep understanding of what this press or this te technology can do for me. Everything I produce, I design myself. It's not a print workshop, it's a design studio. This is a project uh, that I did for Schule für Gestaltung, so that's Basel School of Design, a New Year's uh, poster. You can re read SFG for Schule für Gestaltung. And here I'm gonna show you a second video. So I use the, the Elmer's glue and I do the same thing I just did over there, just in a larger scale. Obviously it is not the first time I've done it here. It, there's a lot of experimentation going on before that. And then I need to sell this design, and you see more blocks lying around. I need to sell this design to the client and that's the moment when I can get started with this. I'm just thinking up now. So of this poster I did an addition of 850. Yeah. So here I'm typesetting Ludlow matrices. Uh, so these are, it's not typesetting type, I'm setting the matrices that I'm casting uh, with hot metal and I have brand new type all the time.
So in the development of uh, digital uh, design practice, probably in the 90s, computers were available. Even for students, they could afford computers. And you can see how it took off and everything went digital. If you go through the history of graphic design, you can see in the 90s, things look different. Probably in the early 2000s, handmade came back. It was handmade and no computer. So nobody was interested in the computer then. And it was, we don't need that machine. Let's do everything old and by hand. And I think it went a little too far with, with, with the digital development. And then it might, uh, might have went a little too far with the analog handmade movement. And now we're somewhere where we accept both. So I try and use the technology in the appropriate way. And that's what I like about today, that it's not one or the other. They go hand in hand.